Welcome everybody to the US Weather Plus w preliminary winter 2013 to 2014 forecast number two brought to you by the main admin of US Weather Plus Mark and we're gonna look at at some models and analogs for this winter and we're first gonna look f through the analogs and we'll look through the years of s winters of 61 to 62, 71 to 72, 89 to 90, 92 to 93. First here is the winter of 61 to 62 and we've got a warm southeast and cold west and slightly cold northeast for the winter of 71 to 72, again, much of the east warm and the west cold and the north. For the winter of 89 to 90, it looks just like a scorcher here. All of the, all of much, pretty much all of the U.S. hot, and I really don't think anything like this will happen. I most agree with the winter of 92 to 93. We got here a cold west and an average east, just about average. Maybe we'll have some warmth here in the south. Probably we'll have some warmth in the southwest, but this is a little more looking like what I'm expecting. Here is the overall, by all analogs, which I chose, generated temperature forecast, and this shows that the southeast and mid-Atlantic will be pretty warm, and the west will be cold and just extend this heat a little more west and a little more south and you're done. Your winter forecast is just about ready according to my thoughts in that case. I absolutely agree with the precipitation with the precipitation. Well above average precipitation in Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia. That's 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 what exactly what I'm thinking. There'll be Appalachian runners that'll be running from the Gulf of Mexico into the southeast, and that will cause a lot of rainfall and maybe even high elevation snowfall during the winter. I kind of agree with the warmth in the I mean the the drought in the west, this little below average area, but I think it should be a little more south in the California, Arizona, and New Mexico, and also I'm thinking the northern plains should be a little have a little more precipitation. Now here is a Jamstack temperature forecast, and the east is hot, the west is cool, almost like the analog show. The Jamstack precipitation forecast shows a wet east and north and a dry southwest, exactly what I'm thinking. Maybe northern plains should be a little, have more, a little more precipitation, but that's not much, not a big deal. Here is the sea surface temperatures forecast, and we got a warm PTO here in the northern Pacific, and possibly a greenland block, and maybe a really, really weak La Nina, although I don't think that one will happen. Here is the CFS temperature forecast, and we got most of the northern plains and a little in the northeast here in the cold, except the northwest, and I'm thinking all of the north will be cold including a little of the northeast, along the Canadian border in the northeast, and the southwest should be warm, but this shows only Mexico warm. Now, here's the Ansel plume, and most models trended to be into a really weak El Nino, just around neutral, and I'm thinking it'll go that way, I think it'll remain neutral. So my forecast will be like this. So it would go like to minus four, but I don't know. It could be anywhere between mi minus five, minus point five, and plus point five. But I think it would go to plus point four as the highest. So that means a neutral. It could go to one, plus one, but I really don't think that will happen. Here is the CFS sea surface temperature forecast, and again we got a plus PDO here in the northern Pacific, and there, it's very similar to the Jamstack, except there is no La Nina here. Here is my temperature forecast, and this calls for a warm southwest and Texas, m much of the southwest and south warm, and the northern plains and intermountain west very cold, especially in Montana and North Dakota. All of the north a little cold, even the extreme interior northeast. Here's the precipitation forecast, and it'll be well above average precipitation in the southeast and in the northern plains, and just above, slightly above average for the areas you see, except the northeast. I'm just gonna give an idea of some storm tracks. Not a real forecast, just an idea, although it's not an official forecast. An idea would be one storm track like this, an Appalachian runner, another storm track like this, here, you see from the through the northwest, northern plains, and then in the northeast. And another would be an Alberta-British Columbia clipper. 
So not really an Alberta clipper, but more like from British Columbia that will go through the north and into the northeast. So that's why we'll have above average precipitation here, but we'll have a high here, so that's why there is no storm tracks through here and it's dry. Here's the pattern forecast. I've got a pretty flat ridge over the west, pretty flat trough over the east, low pressure in the northwest and north and midwest, high pressure over the southwest, and also Bermuda high possibly in the western Atlantic. This is why we'll be having a scorching Mexico because of this plus BNA and the high in the deserts of the southwest. Well, that's about it. Thank you for watching this forecast. But also, if you think this is the end of the video, it's not. And we're going to go on to hear the thoughts of the other main admin of US Weather Plus, Carl. So we'll let him speak now for his thoughts. So thank you for watching. This is Carl Schneider, um, another forecaster for US Weather Plus with Mark. And this is my take on winter forecast number two. So I want to start out by looking at um, some ENSO plumes. Uh, this is one aspect of the winter forecast. So um, really, these you can interpret all these things for yourself. You've probably seen a lot of remarks, but really kind of an upper, uh, upper trend um, towards, um, towards the neutral area in terms of the ENSO, and it already is neutral, but um, towards the El Nino side of things, maybe a little bit, but overall neutral. CFS really showing the same thing and this is all a bunch of the models and all of these models are really showing a neutral winter as you can look at December January February and maybe 0 0.1 but really neutral now the CFS sea surface temperature anomalies um, are showing some a little bit of above average here in the ENSO region but really nothing to be concerned about um, kind of a warm PDO but not as much as we've been seeing earlier, and maybe slightly warm or AMO, which could help feed the East Coast snowstorms. Um, and now here's the Jamstech sea surface temperature anomalies, and Jamstech not showing anything in the Enso region, is showing a pretty big um, here with this warm PDO in terms of the AMO, really uh, kind of a cool AMO. So, it, but I'm going to say here, I don't agree with the jams tech in terms of temperatures. I really don't agree with it. Um, pattern it sets up, I just don't agree with. Um, and none of the other models do either. And the precipitation, I agree with the jams tech, but I don't agree with the jams tech for the reasons that it put the above average precipitation in those areas, if that makes sense. Um, and I, I really don't think the jams tech is a very good model at all. And um, actually, and I don't think any of these models are really great. Um, CFS may be a little slightly better. Now, this is the CFS temperature anomalies, and it's got most of the northeast here in the, um, the below average temperatures, even a little bit into the southeast with the below average temperatures. As far as on the precipitation side of things, I really agree with this above average precipitation in the southeast, and as you'll see on some of these other models, I would expand it north a little bit and for more coverage in these areas. And now here's the NCAR model, and contrary to the CFS, um, showing a very different solution up here in Canada in terms of where the cold air is. Now, if this verifies, there's all this warm air up here, this uh, these high pressure dominating the Arctic Circle up here, and so this cold air could be forced down here into the lower 48. Now, I'm not really sure I agree with the placement here in the northern plains of the cold air. Maybe shift east a little bit, but I, I, I kind of agree with the NCAR a little bit, much like I agree with the CFS a little bit. And here's its precipitation. I really agree with this precipitation, except for this below average in the northeast, but I do agree with this above here and this below in the west. Now, this is my analog years, and this looks very different than Mark's analogs he had. Um, mainly uh, because you'll see here in the northern plains it's above average and here in the southeast uh, mid-atlantic midwest we're below average so uh, very different and the way I matched this up was on ENSO so we're expecting it um, ENSO neutral this winter and um, so I matched up all ENSO neutral winters 
in previous years. This is all of them since 1950. And this is what I got here with this chart. Um, as far as precipitation goes, again, supporting my theory that we're going to have above average precipitation in these regions. And okay, so I want to explain this for a second. So this is this summer's um, temperature anomalies. We had below average from the northern plains down to the southeast. So I narrowed down the analog set a little bit. And this was the summers preceding the winters. Um, I'm going to show in a second. And it, sh and it looks a lot like this winter. Uh, a lot like this summer, excuse me. In, in the way that the temperature anomalies lined up in those in those summers. And so now the, here's the winter that followed those summers that I just showed with that analog. And we've got below average temperatures all the way from Texas up into um, Pennsylvania and those regions. And in the northern plains and all the west and all those areas, above average temperatures. So you know, it just doesn't make sense to me um, to put above average all in the southeast and, and put all the cold in the Pacific Northwest because obviously my analogs are not showing that. And I really agree with this precipitation and I think Mississippi, <laughs> Alabama are going to have above average precipitation winters because every single graphic I showed showed this area in central, <laughs> central Mississippi and central Alabama being above average precipitation. So that's one thing I'm confident about at least. Um, okay, so now here's my temperature outlook, and I really, because before I thought there might be some cold air in the northern plains in these areas, I really, really kind of went with a, with a compromise with all these things, and some above average temperatures, I think Mexico is going to be pretty warm this winter, and maybe continuing up a little bit along the, the west coast there in terms of temperatures. Now, in terms of precipitation, um, I went below average precipitation with most of the West Coast, and really, um, I mentioned Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, Tennessee, uh, Kentucky, West Virginia, all those areas above average precipitation, and really the East in general above average, and just really above average in uh, the Southeast. Alright, so just a reminder here, um, make sure to like our Facebook page, US Weather Plus, and I'm Carl Schneider. And Mark also on this video. And our website is usweatherplus.wordpress.com. Now make sure to subscribe to both of our YouTube channels if you haven't. And if you have comments, questions, uh, just leave a comment on this video. Where we got our analogs, where we got our information. You know, what's your thoughts for these regions? We'll answer all those questions. And most importantly, thanks for watching and have a great day.